Yeah, at the time I started, I didn't have anybody to, you know, to take stuff there, to be with them there, or to do whatever I was doing. And it was actually a vision given to me in a dream about three times, and I kept brushing it aside because I don't know anybody there. I'm like, maybe it's a movie that I watch, but when I wake up, I realize, okay, I didn't watch that movie, you know. But to the glory of God, I just started, you know, getting stuff from here and say, okay, at the right time, God is going to bring somebody my way. And lo and behold, um, 5 a.m. my time, I don't know the time in Nigeria, I received a message from my sister and she was like, oh, I just spoke to, spoke to a pastor in Meduguri about what you're doing, that you need somebody to be your ears. And I said, what? I said, you know, I was just thinking about it before I went to bed. Mm -hmm. So that's how I got connected to him and I started. So what do I do up north? Um, I've never been there. I don't know anybody there. I have no family there. And I think that was the direction God was giving to me, right? So what I do up north is, one, I give clothes to women and children, especially. Not that I don't look after the men, but my focus was actually men and, I mean, women and children. And then I give the kids toys, just because we're trying to tell them there is more to life than violence. Mm -hmm. And then, those who are able to go to school, I give them computer books, set up school uh, libraries for them, and then I give them school uniform as well. And we've been doing that for the past seven years. Everything I just mentioned, aside from the donation of clothing, books, and whatever, are all from my pockets. Wow. And, <laughs> thank you. and so that's, it's been, that has been going on. And uh, I think I've done over four communities, different states in the north, <coughs> including IDPs. And during the, what do you call it now? During the COVID, I did uh, an outreach in Abuja. God has a way of telling you the next thing, mm -hmm. the next thing, the yeah. next thing. I was still doing the normal thing. <coughs> and then along the line, when I was taking stuff to the north, I got my stuff to Jibo, and the dealer, that be the motor park people, they charged me almost 200,000 wow. just to take a few boxes to make you green. And my director said, these things are not even for sale. We are, we, it's just humanitarian. We are giving people. And the guy was like, you are giving people? He mm -hmm. said, yes. Boko Haram victims laugh. Mm -hmm. Do you know what that guy said? He said, Oga, are you also? That one said, no. You be your rebellion. What's your own? Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. What's your own? Why are you giving? Who told you people are not in Lagos that needs what you are taking? Mm -hmm. So he told me, I said, you know what? God actually didn't send me to those people. Mm -hmm. Even my family, this is a sister of mine here. When they ask me, my own people, like Yoruba people, when they, I'm like, God actually didn't send me. Mm -hmm. I will do it, but mm -hmm. it's not where God sent me to. I need to take care of these people. So we did the palliative one in Abuja, um, one IDP, and then I did another one in a community called Kabusa community mm -hmm. within Abuja. So during the palliative, when we were giving them the stuff, the food, a woman was asked to pray, a very old woman. And when she finished praying, she prayed in the Muslim way. Mm -hmm. And she ended it in Christian way and saying, in Jesus' name. Like, <laughs> what the hell? Who is this woman? Mm -hmm. So she prayed and prayed and prayed. And when they told her that, she should say something just to thank the person who put this together. And she was like, I have not eaten for the past three days. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nobody has been able to give me food. But for you people to do this, that is why I don't even know how to pray. <laughs> but tell the person that did this, and she prayed, and, she, and I said, so when they sent the video to me, I said, what? I said, she has not eaten for three days. And then another vision was brought to her, which I called feel the elderly in the community. Wow. And every month, every month, she's, she gets 
10,000 naira. Hallelujah. For feeding. I don't know her from anywhere. And we've been able to reach out to about six, seven of them like that. That mm. they are not even related to me. Mm. I'm not from Abuja. So, and then another birth that we had was what I call adopt a Nigerian child. Mm. I didn't intend to adopt anybody, but somebody in Calgary actually mm. called me and said, Ah, Sister BC, uh, you have an NGO, and blah, 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 blah. I said, Oh, yeah. She said, Oh, I have an understanding for it. I said, what is it? She said, oh, there's this seven-year-old girl in Umaya. I'm from Ekiti. I'm not related to Umaya. And she's like, oh, a seven-year-old girl, uh, she was raped. Mm -hmm. I said, what? She said, that's not the story. I said, okay, what's the story? What story can be bad for a seven-year-old girl to be raped? And she said, well, in the process, the mom was fighting the rapist. Mm -hmm. We keep that. Jesus Christ. I said, what? I said, okay, what's my own in all this now? She said, well, your, the thing is that there's nobody I can think of that can mm -hmm. help this girl out. I said, okay, give me details. She now said, oh, study see. My, you say I'm troubled. So I said, what is it again? That is not all. I said, what is it again? She said, she has a two-year-old sister. Uh -huh. Anyway, long story short, those were the first kids I adopted oh, under my skin. So we pay the medical bills. And because I read law, I have a friend who happens to be the head of the civil whatever in whom I am. I connected, I said, what can you do for this girl? And the person that raped, and blah, blah, blah. I guess the dad was paid. So the dad said, we should bury the case. I said, OK. But well, the dad cannot take care of a seven-year-old and two-year-old. Fortunately, they have an auntie or elder sister in Humaya town. So they moved those kids to Humaya. So I paid the medical, I paid the school fees, the school uniform, got jobs for the, um, for the auntie and the uncle so that they can be able to take care of them. And we've been doing that. We, I mean, I sent about maybe five boxes of clothing and toys, you know, to, and they were all surprised. They're like, I said, where God is sending me to is not where I have people, mm. you know? A couple of times I have senior ones who have fought me. In fact, I have one who is actually in, <laughs> in the government in Ekiti. And she wanted to use my NGO, you know, as okay. And I told her, I said, you know what? Because you are even in the government, I can't be a party to it. I said, when this government leaves, and another one comes, and then I'm, I'm, I'm trying to approach maybe the new government. They will tell me I'm with that government. Remember, I'm not a politician. I don't. Mm. She was, for like six months, she stopped talking to me. Mm. She's like, uh uh, why will you not help your mom? In fact, my senior star, the same parents, she, whenever I post what I do mm. on Facebook, you know what she puts there? Charity begins at home. So at a point in time, I had to unfriend, not that I unfriended her, I unfollowed her so that I don't see her post. Yes. It's my friends that will say, ah, didn't you see your sister's post? Are you people fighting? I'm like, I don't see her post. What did she put? They will say, I said, that is not where God sent me to. So I've done all of that in the past seven years in Nigeria. But last year, I said, you know what? This is established. This is running well. For the past seven years that I started the NGO, I've not been to Nigeria, so nobody knows me. Wow. <laughs> Maybe they will only know my name. Yeah. And we've done a couple of so many things. Every December, we go to about five um, orphanages in Nkuru, and we have Christmas with them. <laughs> giving them, you know, celebrating with them, giving them clothing, books, toys, and whatever. Sometimes, I think last year, we took them to the Babish. Mm -hmm. And we had a good party for them, you know, horse riding and all that. So last year, December, I started the one in Calgary. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, what we started in Calgary was in December, a diaper drive. That was the first thing we did. And just because we want to tell the children, the sick children, in the children's hospital that we are thinking about them aside their family members. So we did a diaper drive. And then we donated 50 boxes of diapers, 20 boxes of wipes, $300 worth of toys, 
$150 worth of books, coloring books and crayons. And you know, funny enough, by January, I think January or February, the Children's Hospital in Calgary, that's Alberta Children's Hospital, actually wrote us and said we were the first non-for-profit organization to donate diapers. Wow. 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 So we will continue to do that. And aside from that, now we're starting to focus on ourselves, to take care of ourselves mm -hmm. in Canada. We're looking after pregnant immigrant women. And how do we do that? When you come in pregnant or you're a new mom, we support you from pregnancy, connect you to the doctors that it's needed, connect you to, and this is not just for Nigeria. Right now, I have five Somalians. I don't even understand their language. And I have two Ghanaians. One of them has a preterm. The baby was in the incubator, so they got connected to me. And what do I do? If you need support during labor, we are there for you. Maybe your husband is not able to be with you in the labor room. We are there for you. And let me quickly say, she's one of my, my directors in my board. So that's why she's giving me enough time to let you know what we are doing. And then, you know, we help you clean the house. Maybe you are in the hospital, we clean the house. We connect, we get food for you, depending on the country where you come from. And then we connect you with the, the grammars in the community so that they can help you with the baby. And we do all of that. God forbid that thing if anyone loses, loses their kid, maybe you know, still bad or whatever, and you're going through uh, trauma, mm -hmm. you know, we will connect you, we'll connect with you, we'll get counseling for you, we'll get the right support for you, we'll get the people in the community to be with you, mm -hmm. to let you know that you are not alone. Mm -hmm. And then we're trying to give our youth sex and reproductive education. This is just because, especially in the Somalian community, when I'm saying our youth, is the African community I'm talking about. We realize that our youth, in the, especially the Somalians, the Sudan, they get raped, and some of them get pregnant, and the community is quite devouring because they are not giving these kids enough tools to defend themselves. Mm -hmm. Even, uh, I think, a few months ago, a pastor actually told me she needed me to work with the youth. And what happened was that the uncle was actually being the one raping her. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In Canada. Mm -hmm. And another one, that, this one is a Sudan, Sudanese. And another one who happens to be in Nigeria, mm -hmm. Uncle too was doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. So this is not just, you know, but everybody, every community is so quiet, is so silent about it. Mm -hmm. And now that they are talking about abortion, I don't know what, you know, what's going to happen with those kids. So. Let me say, yeah, in a nutshell, and then we, we support waiting couples. Like if you, uh, God forbid, bad thing, well, it's not bad, but maybe that's how God designed the couple. If, they are, if you are waiting and uh, you don't have a kid and you intend to adopt from Nigeria, we support you. So I'm working with Lagos State, Oyo State, and Ekiti State to get the right children, get the papers done. I don't process visas, but get the adoption approved and all that, and then you start, or we tell you how to start processing the papers for the kid. So, in a nutshell, that is known for non for that I want, and it's not anti so I'm going to give everybody this. Do you see anybody that needs any of this, or if there's any way you can support, please, we are always open to you know, to support the volunteers. Like right now, I have my garage full of stuff that I need to pack and send to Nigeria. Mm -hmm. So, thank you for your time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going to do another draw. <laughs> okay. Jam road. Who's traveling?
got it this time? Two more and then after. Who got it? They are greeting to pull a winning. Yeah, hey. Oh no, they're Calvary man, they're Calvary. Are you guys? That's you. That's you. Yes. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. Yes. 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 Thank you. I'm going to create your indulgence.